Now joining us is Representative Ron Paul, a Republican of Texas. Uh, you formed a Presidential Exploratory Committee on February 19th. Are you running for president? Uh, yes, I am. I will file the papers today uh, to become an official candidate. The field for candidates for the 2008 presidential race continues to grow. Now, this past weekend, Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas announced that he is forming a presidential exploratory committee, and Congressman Paul hopes his strong opposition to illegal immigration and the war in Iraq will set him apart from other Republican candidates. You get the sense that the country is desperate for someone to show us the way. Not the old way, not the same way, but a new way. A nationally televised debate is perhaps the best, maybe the only opportunity for the less famous among the presidential candidates to make their marks with the public. It's a place for those to force their issues with the leading contenders. Well, maybe the most interesting contender in this entire race is a congressman from Texas named Ron Paul. You voted against the war. Why are all your fellow Republicans up here wrong? That's a very good question. And you might ask the question, why are 70% of the American people now wanting us out of there? And why did the Republicans do so poorly last year? So I would suggest that we should look at foreign policy. I'm suggesting very strongly that we should have a foreign policy of non-intervention, the traditional uh, American foreign policy and a Republican foreign policy. Throughout the 20th century, the Republican Party benefited from a non-interventionist foreign policy. Think of how Eisenhower came in to stop the Korean War. Think of how Nixon was elected to stop the mess in Vietnam. How did we win the election in the year 2000? We talked about a humble foreign policy, no nation building, don't police the world. That is a conservative, it's a Republican, it's a pro-American, it follows the founding fathers, and besides, it follows the Constitution. If you were president, would you work to phase out the IRS? <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> That's what they call a softball. And, and you can only do that if you change our ideas about what the role of government ought to be. If you think the government has to take care of us from cradle to grave, and if you think our government should police the world and spend hundreds of billions of dollars on a foreign policy that we cannot manage, uh, you can't get rid of the IRS. But if you want to lower taxes, and if you don't want the government to quit printing the money to come up with shortfall and cause all the inflation, you have to change policy. If the goal of government is to be the policeman of the world, you lose liberty. And if the goal is to promote liberty, you can unify all segments. The, uh, the freedom message uh, brings us together. It doesn't divide us. I believe that when we overdo our military uh, aggressiveness, what it does, it actually weakens our national defense. This is hardly the end of the 2008 presidential campaign, or even the beginning of the end, but it is, to quote Winston Churchill, at least the end of the beginning. Next on Special Report, Fox News is live at the Cobra Center in Columbia, South Carolina, where later tonight, 10 GOP candidates square off for the Fox News first in the South presidential debate. If you're one of the minor candidates, or what you consider the minor candidates right now, how do you punch through it? One way to do that, of course, is to take on, in some way, one of the major candidates. Now, so far, that hasn't happened in any of these debates. Congressman Paul, I believe you are the only man on the stage who opposes the war in Iraq, who would bring the troops home uh, as quickly as almost immediately, sir. Are you out of step with your party? Is your party out of step with the rest of the world? If either of those is the case, why are you seeking its nomination? Well, I think the uh, party has lost its way because the uh, conservative wing of the Republican Party always advocated a non-interventionist foreign policy. You don't think that changed with the 9-11 uh, attacks, sir? Non-intervention was a major contributing factor. Have you ever read about the reasons they attacked us? They, they attack us because we've been over there. We've been bombing Iraq for 10 years. We've been in the Middle East. I think Reagan was right. What would we say here if China was doing this in our country or in the Gulf of Mexico? We would be objecting. We need to look at what we do from the perspective of what would happen if somebody else did it to us. That's an extraordinary statement. As someone who lived through the attack of September 11th, that we invited the attack because we were attacking Iraq. 
I don't think I've ever heard that before, and I've heard some pretty absurd explanations for September 11. And I would, I would ask the congressman to withdraw that comment and tell us that he didn't really mean that. Congressman? I believe very sincerely that the, that the CIA is correct when they teach and, and talk about blowback. When we went into uh, Iran in 1953 and installed the Shah, yes, there was blowback. And the reaction to that was the taking of our hostages. And that persists. And if we ignore that, we ignore that at our own risk. That if we think that we can do what we want around the world and not incite hatred, then we, then we have a problem. They don't come here to attack us because we're rich and we're free. They come and they, and they attack us because we're over there. I mean, what would we think if we were, uh, if other foreign countries were doing that to us? Can I have 30 seconds, please? No, 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 no wait a second. Let's by the way, here's a look at the uh, early results of our text message poll. In first place, Ron Paul, surprisingly, 33 for 30%. In second place, Governor, you're in second place with uh, 27%. Third place, Mayor Giuliani with 16%. And uh, so we'll be watching and monitoring those numbers for you all night. Ron Paul coming in with the win on the text message election, at least in the early returns, is almost in line with the attraction that he's caused for the press. We're coming up on close to 20,000 votes, and the percentages are still staying pretty consistent. In first place, Ron Paul, 29%. Let's say that Ron Paul, with that big confrontation tonight with Rudy Giuliani, had a very different point of view on so many issues than every other Republican on the stage, yet first in our texting tonight in this vote. I, I think there was a lot of entertainment there, and I think people are looking for entertainment. By the way, I disagree with, with Ron Paul winning that, but I haven't sent in my text vote yet because I've been busy working and I haven't seen it. Michael, what is it saying? That here you have, throughout the night, Ron Paul slipping just 1%, but has been ahead all night, perhaps the most controversial statement of the entire debate, and at variance with everybody else in the Republican field. To be honest, says absolutely nothing. Ron Paul, basically, for me, it's done. The 10 Republican presidential candidates squared off in South Carolina this week, and although he's languishing in the polls, Texas Congressman Ron Paul managed to grab a big share of the attention. I, I, I watched the Republican debate, and I saw this guy, Ron Paul, and he's my new hero. Yesterday you were in Washington at the National Press Club, and I thought this was great. You presented Rudy Giuliani, I guess he wasn't there, but with a reading list. Right. So I watched the Republican debate there, the so-called debate the other night. Did anyone, anyone see it? I watched the whole thing. You, right. The purposes of people who didn't see it, basically there was a very strong interaction between Rudy Giuliani and Ron Paul, Paul who is from Texas. And he's a very...